Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is The Sixth Realm by Final Frontier Games. This is a one to four player Euro board game based in the world of Merchant's Cove. This is a game where you're gonna be dealing with six guilds as you venture off into the Sixth Realm and this new slash old continent where you're gonna be discovering new things, earning the respect of the guilds and gaining the queen's favor. After three years of seven rounds each, you're going to score score your victory points from the different guilds, and whoever has the most points is the winner. There's a lot of things you can do in the game, but it's limited every single round, changing your different functionality between guild to guild as you acquire reputation and value throughout the game. Place out your council members, place out your buildings and other tower locations and cities, and conquer the sixth realm. Let's talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, my review. Just before you get into the setup, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell notification button if you want to greatly support the channel, we'd greatly appreciate it. So, set up for the game. First is you select how many players are playing the game and you select the side of the main board on the table based on that. I've got the two player version out, so I have the two player set up here. Each player is going to select a color, they're going to get all the markers of that color and they're going to get their player board of that color. Take each of the different portions and place them like I explained. A, take the small marker and place it at the top left of your experience or your action point area. It goes from zero to nine. Take each of the uh, triangle pieces and the bracket pieces and put them on each of the bottom of the guild area on your guild track. Take your books and place them underneath those spaces in the spaces provided. Then you're gonna have the right hand side of your game board. You're going to have four council spots, four house locations and four city locations, as well as eight bridges and they fit in perfectly to each of those spots. Take one ink piece and put it in your ink well slot and then take the seal from the starter uh, tile you'll get at the beginning of the game. Your, this tile is going to be different random ones. You'll give one to each player and it will symbolize what ink you get, uh, how much ink you get, which is always going to be one, uh, what specific seal you get, what book you flip over and in this case it's going to be my blue book and it's also going to symbolize where uh, your council member goes at the start of the game, as well as each resource you gain. Speaking of resources, you're gonna get one of each different type of resource, and each resource is a double resource. You're gonna get a relic board. They all look the same. Take one of them and put it next to your board somewhere. Take your guild bonus pieces. They're also of your color and put them next to your game board. And if you're playing a two player game, you'll get these diamond uh, tiles here. Uh, if you're playing with more, then you'll get the triangle ones and you'll get five of them. There should be three markers you'll get that are going to have a number one, or number two, number three, number four on them. Set them aside as well. And whoever wants to start off as being the first player will get this marker here. Uh, then the markers that are going to go on the game board that are your color. Okay, each of them is going to go on a track. You're going to have the victory point track over here. You're going to have the queen's favor. Over here is the council marker space. You're going to have the popularity track at zero as well. Take one of your torches and place it on the zero space on the adventurers guild. And then go ahead and place your marker on the zero space for the navigators. After you have done that, you should have your board, everything should be placed on it, your artifacts, your guild bonuses, your resources, markers, first player marker possibly, and everything set up on these tracks here on the main game board. And you should be done as players. Now let's set up for the main game board. For the main game board, the queen's favor or council area is gonna have a triangle piece, piece placed in the middle that's yellow, and two triangle, um, two, one diamond in the middle and two triangles on either side forming a straight line. Then for the council area, you'll take each of the six different guild tiles, shuffle them up and place them around this marker here, this little rotating um, council's favor marker. Make sure that that is facing north forward towards the 12 o'clock space. Your council member should be placed on the numbers represented to you by the starting tile here. In this case, it's a two player game, so it'll go on two and five. Place the locked markers next to the council area in some shape or form, anywhere, anywhere around you want. These are the uh, brown circular discs. Take a number of workers, or I should say envoys, and pull them out of a bag. You should place all your envoys in a bag, pull them out, and place them down on the boat here. Based on the number of players is how many of each type of envoy there are in the bag. Take the wagon marker and put it in the middle of the merchant guilds, a little like pasture area. And the popularity marker will start at three, but will eventually go up. The Builder's Guild is going to give you a 1x1, 2x1, and 
three-sided L tile, put one on each of those locations and the rest somewhere next to the game board. As far as the Adventurer's Guild goes, you're going to take four of these uh, uh, four of these artifacts, pull them from a bag and put them down into the four slots provided in that red column, and the rest will get shuffled in and put into a bag. Over here is the Alchemist. You're going to get four scribes. They're going to go around the middle section of the grid and then place a book in each of the different nine areas that should form a square. So it should look like a square with four guys around the center book. The Navigators. If you're playing a two-player game, you're going to take the relics there and you're going to place two in each of these squared spaces. If it's more than two players, you'll place one. And then after that, you're going to go ahead and make sure that there's books on the side, there's ink somewhere available, there are a number of seals and resources across on the side of the board here, and that should be it. That should be finishing with your setup. Okay, so let's talk about the gameplay. The Sixth Realm is played over three years, and each year is seven rounds. Each round, each player is going to take one turn, which is where they're going to select a guild, activate that guild, and utilize that specific guild area on the board. There are six guilds, the Scribe Guild, the Merchant Guild, the Builder Guild, uh, the Alchemy Guild, the Adventure Guild, and the Navigator Guild, and they're represented by this little turn dial on the top right-hand side of the game board, or bottom left-hand side, I should say, um, and based on where it's facing is what guild you can utilize. On your turn, you're going to do all these steps and then you're going to pass to the next player. They'll do all the steps and then you're going to go ahead and rotate this marker and you're going to progress to the next round up until the seventh where something unique happens. The year is going to then end and you'll rinse and repeat it two more times, in which case at the end there, you'll score. On your turn, the first thing you do is you check to see if you have a guild bonus for the guild where the marker is pointing at. So in this case here, my marker is pointing to green, which means that if you are starting your turn on this round and you have a marker above your green guild, the markers are these little uh, ones in your color that go right above at the very top of the guild space, you'll take that bonus. The bonus could be an extra ink, popularity, queen's favor. There's a variety of different things that it can be. If you don't have one or you already have used yours, you'll move on to the next step, which is free actions. And there are two free actions. Free action number one is if you have any envoys on the top right hand side of your, your, your board here, you can take them and move them onto spaces that have envoy spaces available to you. Uh, there are a number of different things you can do with envoys. One is it'll let you gain a point for each unique one you have in this top area plaza er here. Then there are three unique areas that when you remove your markers and place them onto the game board, it'll open up spaces for Envoy on your game board, in which case you can increase your amount of action points for a specific guild for the next round. You can flip over a book underneath the guilds, which actually not only increases the amount of action points you get, but it permanently does. And the final one is you'll gain a seal of the color of the Envoy that you place down. Any other Envoy locations is going to be earned. You're going to earn them from these little alchemists, the little scribe area. The other free action you can do is place ink. Ink uh, starts in your little ink blot area, and on your turn, before you go ahead and select to uh, take a guild, you'll be able to take this ink and place it on any of uh, these scrolls that you have on your game board, whether it be the two that you start out with, which is uh, gaining popularity based on your seals, or whether it is refreshing your resources, or of course, the uh, scribes will have books that you'll place on your game board that you can later place ink on if you have the correct book. If you don't want to do any of these actions or can't do any of them, you're going to move to the next phase, which is to select a guild. The only three guilds you can select are the primary and secondary guilds. The primary guild is the guild that is facing this marker straight up. The secondary guilds are the ones that are going from left or to the right. They have little arrows that move on either side. If you want to select a secondary guild, it's going to cost you a resource. And like I said before, you have three resources to start. And when you want to select that guild, you'll have to rotate one of the resources to the X side so that you can actually use the guild. Once you have selected a guild and either paid or not had to pay for the guild that you selected, you're going to go ahead and gain action points for the guild. The first way to check to see how much action points you have is to check to see where that bar is. Typically, it all starts at one, so you might just have one action. However, you can increase your guild points or action points for that specific guild whenever you flip over a resource of their chosen color. So if I select my secondary guild, I'll spend that one resource, in which case I'm only gonna get one action for the guild that I chose. So maybe it's better if I actually use the primary guild, the green one here, which will let me flip over the marker going from one action point up to three. 
after I have selected to flip over a resource or resources because you can do more than one. I think there's a total of two you can flip over from going from one to three to five. And you've checked your book to make sure there's no bonus because there could be a plus one bonus on the left hand side of the book uh, of a specific guild that will give you an extra bonus uh, point. Then you're going to calculate them. So, okay, I chose green. I flipped over a resource. I started with one. I moved to three. My book has no bonus. I get three resources, uh, which turn into three action points. I'll then drop my triangular piece down onto my, my guild here. And now I will spend my guild points. Three points to spend on the guild I chose, which is green. Each of the different guilds have their own unique actions where you will spend your action points. And each guild does something different. We'll, we'll cover all the guilds and what you can spend your action points after I finish going through this. But the idea is gain points and then spend points based on the guild that you chose. The next thing you'll do is you'll go back to free actions, envoys and ink. And then finally, you'll clean up. Any of the Builder Guild pieces that you utilize is going to get refreshed and any of the purple books that you purchased and put on the bottom of your game board are going to be refreshed onto the board as well. Then you'll pass your turn. Okay, so what different guilds are, that are there and what can you do? Well, we discussed the Green Guild, so I'll cover that one first. The Green Guild is the Merchants and the Green Guild has three different options you can spend actions on. If the cart is in the middle of the space of this little like pasture area, you can select which guild you'd like it to start on. If it's already there, the only option you can have is to move counterclockwise or clockwise. In this case, I have three action points. I will move to the gray guild and now I can spend them. And I must choose to spend it on the guild that I moved it to. My first action is I can flip over a resource of that chosen guild's color and that'll cost me one. The second is I can flip a book underneath that guild to give me myself plus one action or to move my bracket up by one for two action points. And the third thing is I can gain another resource of that guild's type, but only up to two if I spend three action points. If I choose one, so I'll move this to uh, gray, I'll spend two action points to flip gray's book. I've got one action point left. Now I can go clockwise or counterclockwise to another guild, and I can then spend a point to thusly flip over another resource. Um, and I can keep doing this, moving from guild to guild, counterclockwise or clockwise, and once you choose a direction, you must continue going in that direction, up until I've spent all the resources, in which case I will leave that cart there until the seventh round of the year, in which case the queen's favorite will get to decide where this is going to go, or, or go in the middle and somebody will get to decide. The next area is the Builder's Guild. The Builder's Guild has two main actions. You can either purchase these structures that are basically like concrete for either two, three, or four action points, or as many as you can purchase based on the action points available. And then you can spend one or two points to place a house on any space on the construction. This is a tile placement kind of mini game. So when I purchase, let's say I purchase this L piece for four, I must place this piece so that it hits a, it at least touches one of the sides around the outside borders of the grid or so that it touches another piece that's already on the grid. And it has to never be diagonally touching. It always has to have at least one adjacent side. So I will go ahead and place this guy uh, on the board. Whenever I place something in this game in general, anything I cover is going to be something I gain. And there's a variety of different things you can gain in this game. I'll cover all that after I talk about the guild actions though. So I'd spend four points, I'd place this structure down, I have no more of these to gain, so I can only go for the smaller ones or for the house. When you pull a house, you'll take it from your main game board, you place it on the board here. If I spent one action, I'll either get the column or row bonus, and if I spent two, I will get the column and the row bonus, which in this case would be increasing my action point for green and a queen's favor. And that's all you do with the builders. Uh, the point of these guys is to make rows and columns with houses attached that will score you bonus points at the end of the game. The next place is going to be venturing to the Adventures Guild. The Adventures Guild, you're gonna have a torch, it will start with zero and you have one action. And that action can be used multiple times and it's to adventure. You'll move from one space to the next of connecting locations on the dungeon space, gaining bonus points. If I have five action points, I can move my marker up to five times, gaining a bonus for each space I land on. There are some unique bonuses here that I can cover because they won't come up again. And those are these artifacts here. 
artifacts or space are, are pieces you can place on the right hand side of your game board that will give you bonus points for the majority of having one or possibly even two different things whether it be envoys or seals or something therein scoring you additional points at the end of the game you're either going to be pulling one from the banner or you'll be pulling one from the bag uh the these guys here, the alchemists, the scribes, these guys are where you're going to either spend a point to move them to gain the bonus that they have next to them. So you can move them up, down, left, or right. When you spend an action point, you'll move them. You'll gain whatever benefit it is. It could be losing ink, removing ink from parchment spaces, because once you've placed one on a parchment, you can't take it off until you get rid of it. Gaining new ink, being able to move up on certain tracks, as well as popularity. The other thing you can do for a number of action points, it really just depends, is you can get these books and you can only get them if they are adjacent to a scribe. You can take that book and you'll spend action points based on the farthest left hand side area on the bottom of your board. It'll start at two and it'll go to two, then it'll be threes and then it'll be fours. So they get more expensive as the game goes on. When you purchase these, these will give you an either, either an envoy or an ink space, and you'll get the bonus when you place it down onto your board here. And you'll continually collect more and more of them that you can utilize when placing envoys or ink. The other action you can take is going to be the Navigator's Guild. In this case here, you're going to either be A, building bridges up to three, or you can go ahead and place your little city, your little like twisted towers. And how that works is you will spend one point for one bridge, three for two, and you will spend six for all three of the bridges. When you place bridges down, wherever you place them, you're going to get the bonus of when you place it down. If you form a complete bridge, as long as there's at least one of your bridges there, you can place a city on either side of the bridge, or I like to call them the wobbly towers. When you do, you'll take the uh, relic, uh, or if in a two-player game there's two, you'll select one of the two, and you will place it on your little relic board, which is going to be a way in which you'll score victory points at the end of the game, and of course, when you place them down on these locations here, you're going to gain the bonus as well. And remember, whenever you take something off of your game board here, that's going to open up a space for an envoy to give you a unique ability as a free action. And those are the main five guilds, but there is a sixth one, and that's the Scribes. It's a small one. It's right between the Queen's Favor and the Builders in case you missed it. It is brown, and there are two different main actions you can do. You can spend an action point to gain an ink, or to remove an ink from an already inked scroll, or you can spend three to remove all ink. So really you're just going to either be adding or removing ink, which is a way in which you're going to be able to place more free actions down. And those are all six of the guilds, either basically gaining new resources for your guilds, building out the kind of builder's guild area, gaining books from the scribes, adventuring in the dungeon, navigating bridges and cities, or finally just messing around with ink. And so you'll spend all those points, and if you have extra left over that you can't spend, you're just going to drop down to zero, and that will end it. So, like I said before, you do check for your guild bonus, based on the guild that this little pointer is pointing at. Then you're going to do your free actions. You will select a guild based on the secondary or primary guilds that it's pointing at. Gain action points, spend action points, free actions again if you need to, and clean up. Then, what's going to happen is this little rotating device will rotate to the next guild and you will rinse and repeat this. And you will continue to do this up until the seventh round. On the seventh round, what happens is you're gonna check this queen's favor track here, and whoever is the farthest along the track, or if there's a tie, the person on bottom, is going to gain queen's favor. They will select whatever space they want and place the marker down on it, and then they will go ahead and flip the guild color marker so that it'll go from their color to black. They'll still have their color on it, but it just means that you can never flip this one again. In which case, you'll take that last action, that basically that last round. But it's kind of like allowing the queen's favor, the queen's favorite person, to select what guild is the one that's the primary one. Once you have done this, you're going to make sure that you take the wagon, if it's on any guild, and place it back just before the person selects, so that you, you know, the person who gets the green guild can actually kind of select what guild they want. And you'll perform this, and then the year is going to end. Uh, when the year ends, you are going to do a certain number of things. Uh, the first thing is you're going to move the queen's, you make sure that you move the queen's favor all the way down, and you're going to return your adventurers to whatever the space on the bottom right of the space they're currently on says. So if I'm on 12 with this guy, this will move down to three, in which case I'll take all actions from three down, which are basically just ink actions. And let's say that this guy is on the nine space and it says two, so I'll take my character down to two, and I'll do the two and the one action. 
and then once again rinse and repeat. Once you've got two of these guilds flipped over, there's just one more year and the game will end. So before we cover points and all that, I want to talk about some of the things I didn't talk about just to give you a full coverage. A lot of this stuff comes down to when you place something on something else, you'll gain that bonus action and you'll move up on a specific track. Like for instance, the Queen's Favor. The Queen's Favor is a crown and whenever you place or gain a crown in any, like whenever you place something on a crown or gain a crown in any way, you'll move up on this track. When you gain the third Queen's Favor, you are going to be able to take one of your, remember these guys here, the uh, diamonds, and you'll be able to place it just like the Builder's Guild, attaching it to one of the other spaces currently on the game board, thusly creating combinations of ways to score points at the end of the game. Some of them will be like, if you have three teal guys and two purple seals, you'll gain three victory points, or it could be having uh, two red guys and four council seats, et cetera, et cetera. But when you take one of these and place it down, you're gonna take one of your three little tokens that are worth victory points and place it in one of the two uh, spaces that, are, that create circles that you make. When you do that, that's gonna symbolize the amount of points you can get from the combination. So you can kind of select what type of end game bonuses you want. But remember that these are shared, so your opponents can each try and get these as well. And every single time you hit that middle of that track, which is once per year, you can possibly do that, you'll place one of your little markers out to kind of give everybody an opportunity to score more, and hopefully yourself. If you get to the very end of the Queen's Favor track and you score Queen's Favor, you'll get a victory point for each one that you gain. It's actually pretty nice. The council over here. So uh, there are various ways that you're going to have council members placed on the board. Mainly it's going to, well, basically what it's going to have is a little council member member uh, seat marker. And when you do that, you're going to take one of your council members, you'll put it on the game board of your choice. If there's already somebody there, you'll move them down into one of the secondary seats and that player will score a victory point. The reason for this is it opens the council member seat and it also additionally will let you take first player. When the queen's favor, the queen's favorite person chooses a guild, the person in that primary seat will be the first player for that next year. Um, speaking of other things too, at the end, I forgot these are little lock markers. After the year is over and all of the seven rounds have taken place, players are going to actually be able to take these locked markers here um, one at a time uh, in order up to the queen's council, queen's favorite, but not the queen's favorite. They'll be able to uh, flip two guilds and then they'll lock one of them. And then the next player will do that. And then after that, you'll take these markers off. So that, that way, not only did kind of the queen's favorite select the last guild, but all the other players kind of got to select how the rotation is gonna look. So the rotation is different every time. The queen, the, the, the council area is just another way of, in, uh, another track. It'll basically say whenever you score this kind of like sun looking icon, that you'll get to move down on this track, gaining bonuses as you do the popularity. This is how you gain envoys. Whenever you gain popularity, which is a uh, yellow meeple, you'll move up on the track. When you get to the marker's uh, end, which is gonna be this little yellow marker here, in this case, it starts at three. When you get there, you'll take one of the envoys and you'll put it in your envoy, sp envoy spaces over here on the right-hand side of your game board. And then, of course, when all of these envoys are removed, except for one, you'll take more from the bag and place them down, and you'll move up the popularity, thusly making it more difficult and more expensive to gain new envoys. When envoys go into your game board, they are going to potentially give you bonuses. In each of the little columns here, whenever you get uh, two guys of the same color or two different guys, you'll trigger a bonus. Two guys of the same color will let you flip over a resource tile of their color, and two guys of different colors will give you a queen's favor. Don't forget, envoys will also give you bonuses when you place them down as free actions. And um, the other last thing that's important to mention is the navigator track. It's the track that basically, whenever you hit these kind of uh, teal looking compass symbols, you're gonna move your marker up on that track. And that's how you're gonna score points with your relics. For each of the relic symbols that you have, let's say that I had green seals on this, and I had four green seals, Depending on where I am on the navigator's track will give me points. If I have a one point to three requirements, it'll give me one for every three of the item that I have. In this case, if I had, oh, I don't know, let's say gray seals. I have three gray seals and I'm at the one to three area, I'll get one point. If I'm at the two to one, I'll only get one. But if I get to one to one, I'll get three points, one for each. So the farther you get on the track, the more value your relic uh, icons will be worth at the end of the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Go out throughout the three years and score points. Now, scoring points in this game, other than just what you've already accumulated, and remember this is a low scoring game, 
is going to have a variety of things you can do. And I talked about a few of these already. So first things first is the houses. You're gonna score points if you've made a row or a column and you have a house on that row or column, you'll get a point each. Artifacts that you've collected from the Adventurer's Guild. It's basically a popularity contest, whoever has the most. Um, if you have the most, you'll score the points. And then you're going to also have the relics as well. The relics are like the one I just talked about here for each of the different icons from the relic space based on the navigator's track will determine who has the most, uh, how many points that you'll get. And then uh, you're also going to score points for any of the uh, different colored envoys in your plaza here. And last but not least, one of the more big scoring areas is the Queen's like council area, the Queen's, the Queen's purple area here. You'll check each of the different objectives that have uh, a number between them and each player will have an opportunity to score there. And whoever is the farthest on this purple track at the end of the game is the winner of the sixth realm. So this is Merchant's Cove, except instead of just Merchant's Cove and you selecting one character and it's like your own type of mini game that's played out on this large game board and you feel different than everybody else. This one here is all of the different merchants, all of the different guilds, and they each function differently and you can select any ones that you want at any point in time. It's a heavy style Euro game with that feeling of Final Frontier games. Basically, if I want, I can work with the merchants until I don't want to and work with the builders and then move over to the navigators and to the adventurers. And so I have to kind of pick and select and choose which of the different types of guilds I want to work with. All along, also working with the counselors and of course the queen to score myself victory points. Choosing my own endgame scoring condition, whether that be the navigators or whether it be these uh, artifacts that I gain adventuring throughout the game, while always working on the new objectives that are being placed out either by me or other players from the Queen's area, and uh, it just has a lot to offer. Now, this game looks big and massive, and the setup looks crazy, and it looks complicated. Well, most of those things are true. This is a huge game. You need to have a huge table space. This is a long game. It's 45 minutes per player, and there is a lot of different options that you can take. Um, There's gonna be a little bit of explaining the rules to players as you begin the game, but, it's pretty simple, actually. The way it is structured makes it very kind of straightforward. You have one to three guilds to select from, meaning that if you don't have the resource for the secondary guilds, you're just gonna do the main guild. And that guild is gonna give you a certain number of action points based on your grid. And that grid is pretty straightforward as well. It's either, is your bracket on the highest location plus your actions, and, and maybe you have a few resources you can spend, you're gonna gain anywhere up to from one to like nine action points. There's also potentially like a guild bonus you can gain and you'll pick that guild and then you're just focusing on one, maybe one sixth of the game board where you're gonna play that round out. I'm with the builders, I'll build this little piece, I'll spend the resources to take a house down, I'll place my house there and that'll give me two or three different little points. Now obviously the game does continually get in more and more impressive and more and more like more things will be more available to you as the game progresses, but it's one of those things where it teaches you the basics as you move on and you start to ramp up, like a lot of other Euro games. What I really love about this game is the options, the selections of where I want to go and the different types of games I get to play. Do I want to adventure and find the relics? Do I want to be the navigator and find, or sorry, the adventurer and find the artifacts? Or do I want to get the relics and farm those city areas? And then there's just little areas that will also help me progress, making my gameplay easier as the rounds move on. Not having, not having to mention that you also want to do make sure that your counselors are selected in correct spaces to take first, because first does make a bit of a difference. Not a huge amount, but it does. And the queen's favor also can help you along the way as well, allowing you to select that extra guild at the end so that you can get the bonus um, higher than anybody else because you can select that guild that you've been working on. I've been working on the navigators far longer than anything else and nobody else is working on it. So I'm gonna make sure that's my primary uh, guild that we're gonna go to at the end of the year here. Uh, it just feels good. It's one of those games that was a slog to learn because there's so much, so many rules because of each of the different little things that I wanted to teach you and the small, just a lot of small little things like the guild bonuses and the resources and whatnot, but it all comes together. There's a spot for everything. Once I learned how to set this game up and play it, I'm never gonna forget it because everything is so detail-oriented as to how it works that all I'll need is a little sheet that tells me the rounds. 
Speaking of that, it would be nice if somewhere there was a player aid. Now this is a prototype, so that might come with it at some point. Maybe I think the back of the rule book does a good job of illustrating the glossary, which I do appreciate explaining each of the different symbols and effects, but I don't really need this anymore because once I played through the game just the first time, I was able to figure everything out and I know what all the symbols now mean because they're kind of all each associated to a different guild. The quality of the game is excellent. A++++. I love the feel of the game. All the art seems like it kind of separates, but it all feels connected in this like same kind of continent area. I know where each of the different locations are and it makes it very easy. The graphic design is very well done in the game. The colors are separated and are different, minus maybe the gray and blue meeples are a little too close in my opinion, but everything else is very distinguished, even your player board. And while it looks big, it looks daunting, there's a portion for each little bit that you use for each of the different rounds. So you're not going to use all of it ever all at once. And there's little combos that can happen. You can place on a specific area. It'll give you a bonus, which will give you a bonus, which will give you a bonus. And I love the feeling of always making feel good moves. And this game has a ton of feel good. It almost never feels bad to take an action unless I myself chose to do so by focusing on maybe just one or two things as opposed to a variety of things. So artwork is excellent, graphic design, coloring, and the way and style of playing the game, all fitting into this theme of checking out the sixth realm, moving in and exploring this new area and being able to choose whatever I want while working with the guilds is excellent. Quality of components is great and we all enjoyed this game and it plays really well at two, three, and even four players. And I tried it at all of the different player counts and even really, really enjoyed it even just at two players. The game is also great because it's a low scoring game and it feels really close and really tight. Everything, even those little one extra victory points you can manage to squeak out throughout the game is going to benefit you. And so at the end of the game, it might be like 25 to maybe 29 points between first and second. So you don't feel like a complete failure, even if you didn't do so well. But it still lets you know that those points are still so important. So as you kind of select different spaces, things start wrapping up at the end and you have to kind of get those last little bits, moving that navigator's track to the next spot just in time so you can go from a two to one bonus to a one to one, oh, it's wonderful. Building on your housing location to score you bonus points to make sure you get the columns and rows where your houses are currently on. Selecting the books that are gonna give you those bonus actions for envoys and ink and please do not neglect your ink and envoys. These are great ways to give you benefits, to give you the ability to take other actions, give you resources back, give you additional seals and symbols because you'll need those throughout the game as you want to score points or earn the benefits of the points that you can already score for end game assignment. If you don't mind a heavy game, a long game, and like a style of Euro with little kind of mini games in between, it's not as mini game-ish as Merchant's Cove is. It's definitely a little bit more on the Euro side for all of these guys where you're basically just moving things around, placing either dudes on the board or tiles on the board or bridges on the board, but it's still really good. Love tight games. I love games that have a lot of variety, but are simple and easy to explain. Now that I know the game, I know I can easily just have a start playing and explain it as we go. And just give you, get you guys like the basic idea of it. And hopefully I did a good job just kind of giving you a base idea. There's probably one or two things I didn't cover or basically like symbols I didn't cover. But I think for the most part, you guys got everything from my video, which is nice to be able to explain something like 20 minutes, even a game this massive. Uh, it's wonderful. This is making my seal of approval easily. Probably one of my favorite euros I have played all year. Uh, yeah, if not my favorite year I've played all year so far, and maybe even farther back into last year. I love the Six Realm. It's mine. Keeping it, you should back this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Sixth Realm by Final Frontier Games. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick this game up. And if you're feeling inclined, feeling charitable, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the subscribe button, the bell notification button, so you can see more videos that we create. We create a lot of different types of board games, a lot of games going to Kickstarter. And either way, it's just very, very nice to know that people are watching and appreciate the video. So if you wouldn't mind, even if you never watch again. Thank you so much, guys. And as always, I look forward to exploring the sixth realm with you next time. <laughs>